Are you aware that different freshwater fish species appear to have different personalities? What I mean is, their behavior varies. Some are curious, some are more cautious, and some are downright spooky. I'm Kim Stricker, and I thought you'd find it interesting to see some examples of fish wariness, as well as other struggles we deal with while attempting to capture underwater footage. First, what you don't typically see is the amount of backbreaking work and preparation that goes into the process behind the scenes. Moreover, it requires countless hours underwater to collect the footage we do. With that said, for me, it's a labor of love, but there are challenges. One of the most important fundamentals in capturing good underwater footage is eliminating the amount of water between your camera and the subject. Getting as close as you can without disturbing the fish can be a tricky undertaking depending on the species. It's not just our physical presence that alarms the fish. It's the sudden sight and sound of our bubbles when we exhale that startles them. As I mentioned before, different fish have different personalities. Some I refer to as good actors, which are those that perform for the camera close up. Then there are those that are unsociable and difficult to approach. I've found that two of the most timid fish in our lakes are common carp and northern pike. Again, no matter how stealthy we make our approach, it's the sudden burst of bubbles that frightens them, and they dart off in a flash. Therefore, it's imperative that we hold our breath and slowly advance to capture the shot before they move away. Out of all the bass species, smallmouths are by far the friendliest. They're curious and are often attracted to us underwater. Not only are smallmouth bass my favorite fish to pursue from an angling perspective, but they are also my favorite fish to work with underwater. They make good actors. All right, Mr. DeVille, I'm ready for my close-up. In the open, largemouth bass are more cautious and standoffish. They don't always dart away, but they do make an effort to maintain their distance. However, when they're tucked under an overhead canopy of some sort, they are much more secure and approachable. Spotted bass pretty much behave in the same manner, preferring to keep their distance, yet are more accessible when within or under cover. The walleye we encounter all seem to have a level demeanor, approachable and not darting off when we exhale like fearful species do. Now you might think a muskie's personality would be similar to a timid northern pike, but I assure you it isn't. A muskie knows he's the apex predator. He's the badass and acts as though he has nothing to be afraid of in these waters, and rightly so. One of the biggest challenges we face when we dive is diminished water clarity. We need a minimum of eight foot of visibility or our bubbles escaping will spook the fish before we even get close enough to see them. The tool we use to measure water clarity is called a secchi disc. Personally, I call it a sucky disc because when we feel we need to use it, the water clarity usually sucks. When the water clarity is inefficient and the visibility compromised, that's when I'll deploy my AquaView camera to explore. The AquaView may not have the maneuverability that I do while scuba diving, but it does do a great job and I learn a lot with it. Furthermore, with the use of an external recorder, I'm able to capture some extreme close-ups and essentially kiss the fish without spooking them. I hope you're enjoying our captivating footage and are learning from this underwater perspective. If you are or have any suggestions, please let me know with your comments. Thanks for watching.